So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of IT Soft Insider View. Uh, today, I'm joined by Stuart Griffiths. Thank you, Roy. It's a pleasure to be here today. Thanks for coming along. Uh, we're going to be talking about how a career in AP is now a choice. Uh, but before we get into that, Stuart, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Stuart Griffiths. Um, I've been working in transactional finance now for oh, almost what, more than 20 years. I um, started my career out as a uh, credit controller um, in, on the dark side of accounts receivable. Um, worked my way up to an AR manager um, and then from there I was offered an opportunity to come across to AEP, um, which to be honest I was reluctant to do, um, but convinced by my FC that it would be a good move for me. Um, I took the plunge and um, never looked back really. Um, since then I've held various AR, AP roles um, across various industries, um, FMCG, um, pharmaceuticals as I am in now. Um, yeah, really enjoy, really enjoy what I do. Um, love AP um, and love the opportunities that it's um, given me. All right, so um, you mentioned you were reluctant to join AP um, at first. Why? What was your opinion of, of AP at that time? I think I had a very low opinion of AP at the time. I think, um, you know, for me, it seemed boring. Mm -hmm. um, all people were doing was shuffling piles of paper um, and paying people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what's, the, what's the thrill in that? Whereas on the AR side, credit control, you're the thrill of the chase, you're collecting money, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're getting revenue into the bank account and, you know, you're, you're, you're a superstar in some respects. Um, so, yeah, I was, um, yeah. But my opinion has <laughs> totally changed of yeah. AEP, and I'm sure we'll talk about more about that as we, as we get on with the It's not boring anymore. No, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> Far from it. So, as I said, we're talking about a career in AP becoming a choice or being a choice. Uh, why? What's changed? I think, like I just touched on, Roy, I think um, AP has evolved from that whole back office, paper bound, uh, boring function. It's something that's really um, now um, at the heart of the business, and I think yeah. anybody now entering into an AP role has got a, a clear um, path as to how they achieve the aspiration of AP manager, or, or even moving out of AP into something else. But initially, initially, I think um, the whole development of of, uh, of, a, of, a, of a person entering into AP now, yeah. like I said, clear roadmap with the AP association, with uh, LinkedIn. Um, there are places people can go to uh, educate themselves, get a qualification to um, reach out to other people within AP and uh, start that conversation. Okay, so there's like a, a more defined career uh, sort of roadmap for an AP person nowadays than there used to be? 100%, 100%, I think, um, yeah. I think when I started, people fall, a lot of people fall into AP, but now, yeah. you know, as an opportunity, I think we can definitely say AP is a, is a, is a clear career and people can develop and grow within that function. Okay, um, cool. So so you mentioned about um, the APA and uh, stuff on LinkedIn. How do you think sort of communicating with other AP leaders has, has developed accounts payable? I think LinkedIn is definitely one of the places where there's a lot of talk. Yeah. Um, I think we are now, I see AP as a, as a community. You know, I like to reach out to people within the community and, and talk to those guys and engage and try and find out what their challenges are yeah. um, what the issues are and from what I hear the lot of issues are, are the same but um, we need to you know we need to talk more you know AP is a family now and I think families talk and we should talk a lot yeah. more yeah share your failures so everyone can learn from them instead of just you yeah exactly I think building on what you've your mistakes to not make them again yeah. and the challenges that we're facing these days are you know are you know are, are immense but again you know working together finding out knowledge we can find everyone's out, yeah. facing the same challenges yeah, or yeah. similar challenges yeah yeah okay um so how do you think in in sort of modern age technology um has has sort of helped to expand your ap um part i think to be honest it's revolutionized the way we work right i think technology now from the times of you know data entry to to key everything in to now technology has given us opportunities to look at or change the change the way we do things from from then to now in terms of uh, efficiencies and um, you know the time saving and the, and then it's cost savings and all the rest of it. But on top, you know, really, 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 I think you know it's it's amazing 
what is out there and right. what is available for people to be able to to um, to use and how it does revolutionize the way we do things okay so uh moving on to the ap leader of the future what does he or she look like i think i think a leader needs to sort of inspire their team um you know you need to be able to um be a good listener yeah. you need to be able to communicate and when i talk about communication i'm talking about you know well, what is the message um do you understand the message and, and breaking that message down sometimes i think you know talking to your team and talking to uh, and understanding what the issues are and how you can help them mm -hmm. i think leaders are about our developers yeah i think leaders are educators yeah i think leaders need to um display um I suppose walk the walk, talk the talk to be credible. Yeah. You know, you can't pretend to be a leader. I think it's it is within you and, and leaders have to know themselves as well, you know, know their strengths, know their weaknesses, know what they need to improve on for for them to be the best person they can be. Yeah. And then from on the other side of that is that then that gives them the opportunity to help their people, their team to be the best that they can be. Mm -hmm. Because if you've got you know, if you're in a high performing team, then everybody wins. You know, you you're winning, the team's winning, the business is winning. Yeah. So, you know, there is a lot to be said about, um, you know, about, um, I suppose, empowering your team to be to be the best that they can be. Okay. Um, so so what do you think is the difference between um, sort of the, the leader of, of today or the leader of yesterday between the leader of tomorrow or the future? I think, I think um, yeah, I think there's, the, there's a whole thing around empathy. Right. I think... Leaders these days have to care. Yes. You know, care about what they're doing mm -hmm. and care about what the, their team. You know, I think the leaders of yesterday were dictators. Right. They dictated a lot as to just do this, mm -hmm. just do that, and get on with it. Yeah. And it was expected that, you know, I suppose, you know, for God forbid that you ever shout openly in an office at people, you know, belittling somebody. But it, it, it happens, and I think yeah. it still happens today. Okay. You know, and I think, you know, is that the way to motivate your staff? Is that the way to, to is that the way to lead? So I question all of all of those old styles yeah. and look at the new styles and say leaders these days aren't any of those things, mm. you know. And I think there is a whole thing around what you know the, the, the caring, the listening, the communicating, the empowering. I think all those things are so so important. Yeah, I guess it's the difference between like a boss being bossy and a leader making people want to follow them. Yeah, yeah. I think um, you know. You can't be a leader without followers. Exactly. And you know, if you are a boss, you know, you, people work for bosses. Yeah. Okay? And and you know, and that's I think that's true. I think if you took if I look at my leaders, I think people work for for their boss, and they give everything because they want to, um, you know, make their boss happy in some respects. And then, but they but the boss gives something back to those people as well. Okay. And so that's it's a two way street. Yeah. So yeah. So you can't you, know, you can't you can't be a leader without followers. Cool. That's. 10 minutes up for today. Uh, join us next week for the next edition of ITSoft Inside of View. Uh, thanks, Stuart. Thank you, Rory.